Thanks for our audience. Okay. <laughs>funky podcast my name is kieran and i'm sean i'm a funky asmr artist uh, hello there yeah um <laughs> and uh welcome to the funky podcast hope everyone is having the time of their life i was drenched in the rain today sean how are you today i wasn't drenched in the rain but um i can definitely uh, agree that the rain is rather cringe um as the youth today say cringe yeah thank you drums yeah no it's um it's a uh, very much an irish sort of thing that is mm. crazy in many ways so i was wondering what topic are we going to talk about today, Sean? Um, today's topic that we've decided on is that we will be talking about actors who uh, should have a comeback slash um, actors who seem to be making a comeback. Yeah, it's uh, the renaissance or uh, who should have a renaissance. Exactly. There was the reconnaissance, so uh, why not have, uh, you know, a carriassance or... Okay, Jason's, which is kind of happening. We can talk about that in a while. Yeah, yeah, we um, got a uh, okay, Jason's. Yeah. So, Sean, um, do you have a first one that we you would like to mention that we can discuss? Well, this is one who, like, I've seen people saying for years they want to make a comeback, and uh, it seems like recently he is, or at least he's about to, and that is Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Who is Brendan Fraser? I do not know this handsome gentleman. Has he ever been in one of those mummy films? Oh, well, would you look at that? He's been in all three of them. Wow. He was also in uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is, you know, a bit of a favorite of mine from uh, from, from the L childhood. <laughs> to be honest, I've never actually watched it. but It's, it's a good time. Yeah, no, it sounds good. I haven't uh, seen it in years. Like, I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe it doesn't hold up at all, but like, I don't know, I think, I think it would. I think as a fun uh, early 2000s movie, it's probably still very, very good. Um, yeah. I remember seeing the cover uh, a lot and him mm. on it, and I was like, oh. Yeah, kind of <laughs> same, I guess, uh, era slash genres, like, you know, like Zathura and the like. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely around that time. I remember, like, the covers of that and, you know, Zoom and uh, <laughs> Surf's Up and, you know, all uh, those. Yeah. It, you'd, like, open, like, the the DVD and you'd, like, see family films that are to watch and you'd just see, oh, yeah, oh. Ice Age and all that, you know, just a classic era to yeah. be alive. And totally. The two Garfield movies. Oh, yeah, classics. I actually remember I got Garfield 1... Mr. Bean's Holiday and something else, I can't remember, but all in one packet, and uh, it was great. It was a great time to be alive. Totally. Um, so, yeah, Brendan Fraser. Yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous actor of what yeah. I've seen. The only, like, thing I have seen him in is he was in as... Now, I haven't watched Doom Patrol, but the Doom Patrol appear in one episode of the Titans TV show. Mm. And I believe that's him in it. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Um, he was quite charming and very fun. Even in George of the Jungle, uh, which he, he was great in that, I thought. I uh, did he too. Was, like, he was very 
fun and charismatic and yeah no he was uh very very good in that so um yeah he is having a bit of uh, a renaissance himself appearing in doom patrol now and he is also going to be in the new batgirl film mm. which was supposed to be released on hbo max exclusively but they have uh since recently changed that to release it theatrically uh, because uh, the axe of Zaslav has uh, taken its reign and he's mm. cancelled a lot of uh, projects uh, that were uh, coming and changed it around. Uh, like, he's actually cancelled, like, Riverdale. He cancelled, like, the Wonder Twins film. That, that I was heartbroken about. Like, I was like, I heard that was happening and I was like, this is going to be, like, the best. I, mean, it's either, I, I would hope it was the best movie ever, but, like, now we'll never know. Yeah. Um, but uh, now we have uh, the Batgirl film yeah. uh, coming with him as the villain, and apparently he's uh, just a joy to be around. Apparently, so yeah, there's definitely uh, a great um, mm. actor to kind of have. Yeah, um, and he's also going to be in the no- he's in an upcoming uh, Darren Aronofsky film as well, which uh, I wasn't expecting. Um, like, because you know, I mean, most people know him for his like family adventure films, like y- your mummies and your. George of the Jungles, you you know, it's to send the earth. But um yeah, no, and he's written that, like he's just like a general, like very charismatic and like charming, like leading man, but I think, you know, with Darren Hanowski like being <laughs> very, very much not that, I think like that's a good way for a lot of people to like see his range. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a good it. mix, I think, to kind of do something different and stuff like that. Um he's very like much in the camp of like Nathan Fillion mm. or um you know, that kind of that that kind of fun family era but also kind of doing dramatic stuff too it's uh it's a good mix and uh hopefully it's uh very very good uh he's definitely past the very vengeance days anyway oh yeah no um i think you know he should like they should reboot furry vengeance um but what they should do is like have it star actual furries uh what are your thoughts on this concept uh i i like it um i also think that they should uh do a special edition of for a vengeance and replace all the animals with uh, the CGI uh, animals from cats and have I, cap people. I find I think that's a very captivating premise. Uh, or you could uh, green but, screen, um, you know, the uh, costumes from Narnia, uh, the the BBC <laughs> ones. Yeah, you've, you show me those, yeah. Yeah, um, that, that, could, that could mix in with like the 2D animated drawings as well. <laughs> yeah. Just, like confuse people all together yeah but going back like to something you said earlier okay like how about this concept furry vengeance it's the main characters of furry vengeance versus bill murray's garfield oh wow oh, that's that's um that's cinema right there yeah yeah no uh, sp- speaking of um like a, a really serious topic though he is like he deserves so much like he's such a a positive mm. vibe from him not not just himself but from his movies even something like for revengeance you can tell that he's he's trying to save something yeah. and he's not just doing it for a cash grab he's genuinely there and he feels passionate about whatever project he's given and really does try to give it his all so i'm just happy that he's going to be doing something as fun and as sort of exciting as the new Batgirl film mm. coming um, with J.K. Simmons apparently reprising his role as Commissioner Gordon so yeah yeah it's interesting stuff uh, I'm looking forward to that uh, yeah. seeing what he will do in that um, Mr. Fraser you know totally uh, yeah any more thoughts on um no i think uh, i think i've said everything i need to say about him i do think he's um i mean like i don't know like yeah like like you said like even like in something like furry vengeance you know like you can clearly tell like he's someone who like even when the film's not good like he's always trying and i think you know that's definitely something to respect yeah he's he's um he's a very charismatic fellow and Mm. yeah he, he was trying his best like i haven't like watched the movie in its entirety I really, I feel like we need to sit down together to watch it just to kind of 
mm. take it in and see its um footage. its furriness. Yeah, its footage of things and all of that. Um, I think the trailer genuinely is funnier than anything. Uh, yeah. And I just remember like there was that one like bit in the trailer where they show like. They they show like the squirrel like screaming and it's like obviously like some like really like dodgy CGI and they play it, like is that like is that like audio clip of like the goat screaming and they play that over it which was like a meme at the time and it's just like whoa yeah no the, it's what, what, what that, that 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 footage isn't even in the movie oh oh wow <laughs> that mean, was the only bit of the trailer where I actually laughed <laughs> <laughs> the best bit of the trailer and they cut it out yeah it's strange I don't know it's um some trailer editor must have put that in or some or they they found some footage and were like yeah let's put this in to kind of make it more appealing yeah trick uh, people into thinking it'll be good yeah um yeah no I, uh, for vengeance talk is definitely for another time anyway yeah we need Someday we need to sit down, like watch together, and then do the six hour furry vengeance analysis frame by frame. Yes, why? What? What? What's? What it truly means? Why it's a horror film, or why it's yeah. a psychological thriller? That's gonna be like yeah. the title of like a new video essay, like furry vengeance, and the current state of the human climate. Mm-hmm. It it says a lot about society. Yeah, and as much as we don't, uh, we aren't fond of something like furry vengeance. Mm. It's nothing against Brendan at all totally. because you know he's um, this is just uh, recurring love for him and mm-hmm. uh, genuine excitement for what he has next. That Darren Aronofsky project sounds interesting. So I'm quite fond of Aronofsky. I've only seen like a couple of stuff from him, mainly Noah. Um, I have been meaning to watch Black Swan. I haven't watched it yet, and I've been meaning to watch Mother. I've heard a lot of uh, stuff about uh, that director and uh, some of the yeah. work he's done and uh, some of it's uh, really interesting stuff. I'm just really uh, interested to see what kind of a role he would play, though. I don't yeah. know. It's a, it's a bit of a weird choice, but you know what? Um, seems interesting anyway. Mm. Um, Okay, so, so yeah, uh, that's enough about Brendan, I suppose. Uh, mm-hmm. The next one I want to talk about and discuss, um, if you're, are you finished, yeah? I, I am finished, yes. The next one I want to talk about is uh, an actress by the name of Sarah Michelle Gellar. Mm. Sarah Michelle Gellar was uh, mainly in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Cruel Intentions, and I don't was she in Scream or was that someone else? I can't remember. I can't no, she was in I Know What You Did Last Summer. A couple of horror films. That was it, that was it, yeah. She was in um The Grudge and uh, you know, just um some some of them I actually haven't seen. I've only seen like clips. Mm. Um but uh I I guess the main one from my childhood anyway was seeing her as Daphne from the Scooby Doo films. The yeah, two. same here. It's like the main thing I know her from, anyway. Um, and recently, she hasn't done much at all. Um, like, the, the, the her husband, Freddy, who played Fred in Scooby-Doo, um, he's done, like, voices in Star Wars and stuff. Yeah, I know he's in Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, and other than that, with that family, I just haven't heard much about mm. Sarah and what she's doing, she probably is in stuff, and it's probably interesting, like projects of you know just television and stuff yeah. like that, just genuine like dramas and uh you know it's just kind of a lot of it's kind of stuff we've already seen, but you know probably interesting mm-hmm. enough. But I really want uh, to see her back on the big screen. I think that would be uh quite honestly a really really good thing and here's a why because not only is she really really passionate about projects and uh very uh fun to have uh on the screen but i genuinely see her in the light of you know not passing the torch but being that mantle and we can have 
stuff like Buffy or Daphne in the back of our heads and be like, oh, that's that woman, look at her now, you know what I mean? It's kind of like how, you know, when I first saw Annihilation with Natalie Portman Mm -hmm. and seeing her as uh, a college professor and, like, you see stuff like, um, I don't know, like the Star Wars movies or you see... um, garden state and she's only like a young girl and now she's this kind of grown up sort of way it just mm. like it's it in the, it didn't make me feel old and it definitely isn't a thing on her because she's just genuinely just aging naturally of yeah. course but it just had a certain element to me and how much you know of a joy she is on screen and yeah like it's uh, good how, to see like yeah the performances evolve with them yeah and even with Winona Ryder especially you know when you watch something like Mm. Beetlejuice and then you go with the Stranger Things it has that effect again you know it's like oh that's that woman where look how amazing you know and I I love uh, Sarah to be a part of that and to be a part of a cinematic project doesn't have to be the most out there epic Marvel thing Mm. but you know, even if it's an independent movie where she does uh, most of the shots of her, just her crying and staring at the sunsets and piano music and violin, uh, you know, just yeah. does, like, I don't know, like, some, uh, one of those, like, uh, Mar- Marty Scorsese movies or something, you know, just, I don't know, like, or Robin and Bank or something, you know, just, <laughs> I don't know, just, um... This is something like that, and uh, you know, even when you watch something, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer or something, you see her old movies, and then you see her now, and she's doing like independent stuff, and she's doing, uh, wonderful things. Even with Clint Eastwood, when I watch, it, you know, it's with every, uh, sort of fantastic actor, you know, and I I think she should be a part of that because she's just fantastic. Like she's really really good, um. And I, I just want to see more. And I know that she's probably very busy with other things, but, um, you know, just leave off television for a while because I think people need the big screen and people need cinema. And I think uh, she'd be a really, really one- welcome addition to that because she's just fantastic and has uh, a lot of uh, range. And I, I'd i like her to do uh, more of that and oh. All that so yeah no i do hope definitely that people like you know uh, maybe people who didn't see buffy when it came out because you know like like her like her performance as buffy was like so influential that i think you know it would be nice to see um to see her, like come out with another good performance now so that like you know more people can like see her talents yeah buffy became that character people remember her as her because that character became such an icon and one of the most influential characters of all time in all of um like television and uh in a genuine like sci-fi and fantasy and people still especially talk about it to this day because it's um 25 years since uh yeah since it originally um came out i believe so yeah um yeah no it's um it's definitely a very very interesting thing and not only just to see you know another a uh, great performance from her but just to have her back man you know it would be just uh, a wonderful thing and especially like in the like a cinematic performance you know what i mean because you have all these um these actors who you know, you're kind of sick of them. You're sick of, like, seeing your Tom Hollands and your Chamolets and your, um, what is it? Um, Chris Pratt. Oh, my God. No, I, like, honestly, like, I don't mind these actors, but there comes a time where you're just like, Jesus Christ. Like, honestly, are they, like, bored that they have to do? Are they stuck for money? Like, they're not. I'm... Yeah. Chris Pratt is fuck you money. Like, honestly. Totally. Like, there's no reason for... I don't know. Like, come on. And there was that fucking Pete Davidson as Marmaduke. Did you hear about that? 
no. Yeah, there's like what a Netflix. The fuck? It's like one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever heard of. And okay, it's... that's like Jesus of Christ. Everyone like I don't know who. I mean, okay, I don't know like who would voice Marmaduke, but it's like literally I, anybody else. <laughs> like I just I I want to I want to see the like the meetings that took place. Yes, for someone to like make a Marmaduke cartoon. And then to like say like okay like we need the Marmaduke voice actor and like how they landed on Pete Davidson like was he just like passing through the office and they just like he was the first person they thought um, like, I don't I, know. I wouldn't be surprised he was probably like yeah like why yeah maybe they were like looking for someone else to do it independently and then like Kim was Kim Kardashian apparently they are um mm. saying I don't know um and she was like yeah no fuck a minute here's money <laughs> okay. Put my peony in the movie. Yeah, I, I just, I, no, I have no problem with him. I have yeah, no, no, nothing no against problem. him at all. He's uh, quite funny and all of that. But like, there comes a time where you just see all of these continuing actors to appear in certain projects and it just becomes too much. Yeah. So I'd love to see Geller back, not as like a kind of a pinpoint, oh, she was Buffy and now she's this. But as a genuine, look, I'm doing work. Mm. I'm going to do this performance and all that. I just think she has that with her and stuff like that. And many people on this uh, list as well who kind of want to do it. So um, do you have any uh, other uh, final thoughts on uh, Sarah? Uh, No, I think uh, we've said everything that needs to be said. And I definitely think, you know... um I, I think she could definitely lend her uh, acting prowess to uh, some more projects in the future, and that would be a, a good thing, a very good thing. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see her, obviously, in, like, an independent kind of, you know, you know, like, one of those things that, like, appears, um, you know, main, uh, like a mainstream independent movie where it's, mm. like, you know, you kind of watch it in the cinema and it like, becomes the, like, talk of anything and not a sequel or a reboot to something. Yeah, yeah. But I like, also, uh, yeah, uh, I can't think of it. Call any. Me By Your Name or something. Yeah, in, something in that, like in that. In that kind of, like, category. Yeah, it's something like that. Um, or Coda, something. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, it's just something like that, but also I'd love to see her in a fantasy movie or something mm. just abstract, just something really... Uh, abstract like that and it doesn't have to be like a mainstream sort of remake of anything it can be you know whatever it needs to be i don't know uh even like voice acting in like a dreamworks movie or a pixar film is like a a main thing she's done that in the past uh, for this really weird thing with Sigour- do you remember that I, I think i sent you the trailer for it. it was a bit weird i think it was directed dvd at that point but you know it, that that was made just for uh the kind of money and she would probably you know just needed to be yeah no something she had kids at the time so it's probably you know she was thinking of them maybe but um Think of the children yeah <laughs> uh but yeah no um i i just uh i hope that uh she does more and um look i know she's probably is working mm. but I, I think it's uh better i i'm a bit of a pact when i say this i really want to see her on the big screen that's um, that's something I really want uh want to see. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Going to like you, you know, like you said, like she should be in like a DreamWorks movie or something. Like I think like if she was in Trek Five, I think I would die in a good way. Um, I wouldn't. I I'd be brought back to life. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of somebody who seems like that, possibly having a comeback right now is uh Mr. Mike Myers. Uh, oh yeah no we to, can talk about that now yeah not uh, to be mike confused with michael myers you know the halloween trilogy oh my god him too. you know rob uh shouted to him cinematic venom yeah uh, a couple of years ago he made a white tp for the halloween movie and like oh. had um you know like the shadow of mike and like he put in like the voice of like um austin powers like <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that was well, like baby. Horny, baby and stuff like that it was like him uh, like dubbing over uh, Michael, My- it was absolutely hilarious. That sounds like an experience. It was really funny. I have to uh, shout it to him. Definitely, oh, shout man. It to him. 
really really funny stuff um anyway yeah you were saying mike myers yeah no mike myers because he uh he showed up um well this was like the first like i guess quote-unquote recent uh film he's been in where he was like you know in a big role which was a bohemian rhapsody oh yes yeah, yeah. he uh he appeared that that was made because of wayne's world wayne's world uh yeah that's uh one of the reasons it got as big as it as it did yeah no they even like they even like have a line in the film where yeah it's like, they did yeah it was a bit on the nose but oh uh, yeah you know. no it was like kind of like Ugh, but it was like yeah it was cheeky enough and fun yeah. it was like yeah oh we're we gonna make baby rhapsody a single now that's that's a song people gonna be banging their heads to in a car and it's like uh <laughs> references yeah but you know he was actually like a fairly important character in that like you know you'd, ex- you'd expect he'd be like a one scene cameo but he's actually like decently important to the plot all right okay and um it feels weird saying plot he played like a real person based on real you know what i mean yeah um but yeah no that was um pretty good for him um and recently is that the new show the pentaverse oh okay yeah yeah or it's like him playing like a bunch of different characters i have heard of it yeah and it's like i mean i've seen like i've seen the shrek cameo in it yeah you sent me that clip yeah, yeah. and you know that's pretty uh pretty poggers but um uh you know that's again like i think it's good to see his like comedy back like i saw people saying like when it came out they're like even if like the pentaverse wasn't like the greatest thing ever it definitely like reminded them how much they've missed his comedy oh right yeah no it's absolutely fantastic to actually see him back in mm. stuff like that um to kind of do something because the love guru really hurts his um not yeah. just his career but it really hurt him because it, it just didn't uh work for audiences and stuff like that and like to see him kind of uh back like right okay i'm gonna really uh, do what what i can with this and like really give something uh good and fresh and funny and uh that seems to be this and now he seems to be coming back uh doing stuff i remember he was um he was in this margot robbie movie or something but like he he didn't play a very very big role and it was very kind of hmm. um it was just people didn't even know he was in it uh because it was just kind of there and stuff like that um but yeah no i, I saw like uh clips of him recently where he's uh talking about his past work and stuff and he has said that he would do a shrek movie every year if he could because yeah, he so. loves the character <laughs> It's literally seeming like, yeah, no, for Shrek 5, it's like everyone's agreed to come back um, for the most part, yeah. Um, it's truly amazing, like, because um, we were really worried about Shrek 5, weren't we? Like, um, yeah. you know, it was supposed to be like, oh, 2019, there's going to be a trailer. Uh, like, like, that w- that would have been like the golden timeline. Yeah, and uh, we, we Shrek were... Shrek 5 would have prevented COVID. Oh, yes. I don't even know how, it just would have, you know? Yeah um and like there was all that kind of talk and then um recently the puss in boots uh thing has become like a reality now yeah it's coming out now and um i think that looks quite good mm, uh, i'll have to see the movie but yeah um hopefully it's um hopefully it's satisfactory yeah but i i do because i was on i was unsure if mike would come back for it but seeing him make that Shrek cameo in yeah. uh, the recent piece of work he's done, there's no doubt that he will uh, yeah, no. be Shrek. <laughs> like, and, yeah, no, I was kind of the same. Like, I'm thinking, like, uh, does he want to do Shrek again? Like, uh, I mean, it, I never, like, seems anything bad about it, but I can imagine, like, does he want to move on? And he's just like, I would do one every year, every single year if I could, and I would come back for everyone. I'm just like, okay, he, he, he's on board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he already recorded his lines. <laughs> <laughs> he recorded all his lines. Li- either like, either like improv like three hours of lines, and he just gave it to him. And he said like, they haven't even written a script yet. Just like, make this. <laughs> is that yeah. is that buzzing about it? Yeah, hopefully it's uh tremendous. Uh, I've heard they were supposed to like reinvent the series or something, but I think. Um, I mean, they say that every time. To be fair, <laughs> they say, "Oh, we want to make like a very new experience." Like they're like they're hardly gonna come out and say like it's this. I mean, they're hardly just gonna come out and say like, "Oh yeah, we've just been like we're just creatively stuff. We can like do the same thing over and over again." Like the, no, no PR people are gonna say that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But um, I think it was like yeah, but um, 
yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, it's uh, mm. it's tremendous. Um, yeah, no, Mike, he deserves to do a lot of uh more work now, and I'm I'm happy for him mm. that he is doing work like this because he deserves it. Um, and uh, yeah, people miss his comedy and want to see him uh do more stuff. So it's it's good. Uh, even like Eddie Murphy came back and like. I uh, did more like he did Dolmite is my name. Yeah, which uh, I heard was very good. I heard it was very good. I haven't seen it to be yeah, honest. Right, I want to though. Like I want to see it. You yeah. just reminded me it exists and like I really want to watch it now. Yeah. Um No, I've heard mixed things about coming to America too. Yeah. Uh, but same. um you know what? It, it, that was just probably like you know, I was probably just a I, I I think he's um he's still he can still like rock it and stuff like that. I, totally. I think he can still uh, do stuff so yeah um yeah mike myers is definitely um a really really big uh influential uh person so mm. yeah uh any final thoughts um you know i do hope um someday mike myers and michael myers get to uh face off in a very um they get to face off in the room movie like mike v mike Mike v. Michael. It, it can't be as bad as the last Halloween sequel, as far as <laughs> I've heard, anyway. Because um, I've heard Halloween Kills wasn't uh, re- received very well. I so. liked Halloween Kills. I prefer the first of the uh, new trilogy, though. Okay, I haven't seen them, so... I'm optimistic for the next one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I, I haven't even seen any of the Halloween movies that I've watched. Um. Mike Myers versus Michael. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'd say he'd be up for that. I'm not sure if the Halloween oh. creators would be. <laughs> and uh, that, 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 it does seem in line with his kind of comedy. Yeah. Is like... So, like, would, like, would Mike... My, so like, here's my pitch anyway. Like, Mike Myers fights Michael Myers. And then, in the end, they, like, you know, put aside the differences and bond. And then, like, they both go, come together to... Uh, to it to fight um, Michael J. Fox in an epic showdown. Oh God! Yeah, and then they just like then they team up and they just like, and they have to find another Michael to fight, and then like you know they just like they start taking on like the whole world of Mikes and Michaels. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. Uh, oh, Mike White, the writer of School of Rock. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Mike McCarthy. Uh huh. Um, Shout out our friend Mike McCarthy. Um. Michael Bean. Ah, uh, totally. Um, Michael. Michael Morbius. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Uh, oh, and Michael from Greece too. Yeah. Um. Michael uh, from uh, the Paranormal Activity. <laughs> oh, of course. So many Michaels they could fight. Mike Wazowski. Ah, oh, yes, Mike Wazowski. And uh, yeah, no, it would be the world of mics anyway. The mic first. And they'd be holding mics at some point. Yeah, no. Um. So yeah. <laughs> Is that gonna be like the tagline for the movie, like into the mic first? Yes. Mic check. Yeah, mic check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um. Seeing Chip and Dale, uh, I don't think we're far off from that becoming a reality. Yeah, job. no. Was there a Shrek reference, a cameo in Chippendale? I feel like I heard that somewhere. That, that was, yes. Oh, my God. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what it was. So it, was, um, it wasn't like Shrek in the flesh. So the, um, the villain of the movie has a factory in which uh, all like old junk uh, gets thrown and all of its merchandise that was made to be sold but never sold. Mm. So there's like... Like a Shrek shampoo, a certain a certain Shrek shampoo, but there's also other stuff. Man, I would have and bought it, up the entire stock of Shrek shampoo. Uh, there was some. It wasn't like the regular Shrek shampoo. There was like something else. Oh, okay. And it was. Um, I still would have bought the entire stock. Yeah, there there was like other like Shrek toys or something mm. there, but like it was all kind of in like I I don't know what what it was. They were just kind of. Like products that they use to kind of, it didn't really make any sense to be honest. Why it was there, but 
I think it was just uh, the idea was, oh, we need a Shrek reference in here. Let's do yeah. it. It wasn't really there for a reason. Um, some of the stuff wasn't really there for a reason. Like I, I kind of found the movie charming, but there was a couple of bits. Like there was that guy from South Park apparently that just really? sat there. Yeah, there was like a South Park character that just sat there and like, um, uh, with some other people, and he was just like an extra in the background, and they walked past him. That, uh, just that, stuff like that. It was random madness. shit like yeah, that. Like, I know, yeah. like I know, like there's a scene like I saw in the trailer where like. They have like Jimmy Neutron's hair and like like a plastic bag or something. It's like in some evidence room or something. And I thought that was when they have like SpongeBob's like hat from like the Krusty Krab. Yeah, no, that's um, that's part of the plot actually. Yeah, wow. And um, they have like I know they have like a couple like Kingdom Hearts references in there. It's pretty funny as well. But yeah, no, but there's it's... um, yeah, there's a, a lot of it's basically every sort of mm. uh, thing. It's because these fictional characters live amongst us. Basically, that's mm. what the the references but um yeah it was really it's a really bizarre film but uh yeah um uh off that um yeah the shrek reference was just odd <laughs> it was just really weird but um I, I it was welcome because you know any shrek reference really is welcome. yeah um but yeah no other than that uh for mike myers uh, i definitely want to see uh more from him mm. Uh, speaking of like uh, bizarre movies that are uh, made today that are, it just seems like they're coming out like the most bizarre stuff. Nicolas Cage has recently made a Cage Assault, as we were saying, and yeah. one of his movies is where he plays himself and a rich man uh, wants to meet him because he's a very, very big fan of Mr. Cage and travels out uh, to meet him. Or no, uh, Pays Nick Cage to come to his party and uh, they become friends and uh, other like crime stuff happens as well. So, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a very bizarre premise and bizarre stuff which that includes Mr. Cage talking to another Mr. Cage, a uh, younger Mr. Cage. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it's um, genuinely it's great to see. Nicholas back in movies uh especially with no I haven't seen Pig but I've heard some very very good things about it yeah no it seems like it started a few years ago with Mandy I think is when it started like the cage sounds really started coming out and then he's like ever since then like he's like just been like he's just been like taking W after W uh so to speak like he was in uh Mandy which like that's kind of like a modern cult classic now at this point uh, it's on its way there anyway. Then he was in, um, he was in like Teen Titans Go to the Movies as Superman, which you know, like that the role he's been like, the a version of the role he's been wanting for his like whole career at this point, like yeah, at least. And then um, Spider Man Noir, yeah, Spider Man Noir, then, then Willy's Wonderland, Willy's Wonderland, which then, I I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, and then uh, then Pig, and uh, and now this. Yeah, no, he's um he's been taking roles left and right, but it it comes like a kind of, you know. Uh, some he's really uh, going to be good at, but sometimes he just needs a little money and stuff like that to be able to uh, do, you know, just uh, stuff. But he always gives his uh, all when it comes to uh, every role he is given. Mm. Uh, like there's a, a movie that came out between Willy's Wonderland and Pig that I don't even know the title of. Is it Color Out of Space? No, that that was before oh, Willy's okay. Wonderland, actually. Um, oh. it, it it was this odd film. I think he has... He seems to be wearing the same costume from Willy's Wonderland and has... Like, a a shared color. universe? I don't know, because... I, I don't know. It, it was it was a bit of a, a strange uh, trailer, um, but I, I don't even know where the movie is because I haven't seen it mm. anywhere. It was like advertised for a little bit and then that was it. But yeah, no, he does th things like that that you don't even hear about. A lot of actors do, like, to be honest. But the thing with Cage, he's always given it his all and he's always uh, fun. And now seeing him do independent projects like Pig, seeing him doing uh, the... What's it called? The case of massive talent. What's it the unbearable weight of massive talent. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Doing stuff like that 
makes me think that we're probably going to see uh, more of him in uh, on the big screen. And, yeah, um, and look um, forward to that. I'm I'm assuming like he's going to be in like the the upcoming Spider Verse sequels as well. So like we got that going on. I hope so. Yeah, no, and it'd be great to have him in it. Um, also, the Croods. Oh yeah, the Croods. <laughs> uh, I've seen both of those movies now, and they they were both very very good. Mm. And uh, he was a welcome addition to it. He's a he's a tremendous voice actor. I believe he just has yeah. uh, that kind of a voice that can crack you up. That certain. Uh, element to him like Patrick Warburton or uh, one of those uh, Pat vo- Oswald. yeah one of, one of those voices that's just a genuinely like he could say anything any sentence at all and it would like almost like make you crack up and mm. especially animated with uh, the beautiful animation of DreamWorks and all of that it just kind of it's a fun thing to embrace and he's just welcome on screen and yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to uh, just whatever else he's doing yeah and like you know another thing is like with all like the other films that were coming out like in the 2000s and everything like in the early 2010s like uh it seemed like i mean i know i was yeah they like financial issues so like he's just taking on roles for money but like mandy onwards it seems like everything he's done is something he's actually cared about i or guess at the very so. least or at the very least every release chosen happens to be in like a well-received film yeah, no, th- there's there is other stuff there though besides that that mm. weren't well received, and I I think he just, he gave it his all, um, but he's always like been reviewed as one of the best parts of that. Yeah, uh, it's genuinely not his not his fault, but um, I, I genuinely think that since uh Pig and Mandy and all of these things, we're p- probably gonna see uh more uh good. Uh, cage movies coming our way so i'm looking forward to that totally yeah um i, I think my final thoughts would be no since mandy yes but uh, there was that movie between willie's wonderland and pig that i i don't even know the name of to be honest i i just remember it was him with some sort of collar it had something to do with it and it was like it would like blow him up or something. It was like one of those plots. It was kind of like, like an action. Like Battle thing. Royale. I yeah, it was one of those weird things. It was like that but with Cage in it. Which sounds great, but it just it something about it was odd. Um but I don't even know the name of it. I'm not even gonna bother looking it up because he probably doesn't even know the name of it. <laughs> um but yeah. Um <laughs> uh but no, I, I think more cage uh coming our way is uh, gonna be a good thing and yeah totally, is, totally. Uh, even if it is independent projects or if it's uh, more uh action hero stuff or if it's uh voice acting i'm looking forward to whatever it is so yeah yeah no i uh, i agree um somebody else who uh, seems to be doing, um, seems to be making a bit of a comeback anyway, is, um, well, possibly, like, this is one I want to, like, ask you, like, do you think, like, we'll be seeing more of him after this? Uh, Hayden Christensen. I thought you'd never mention that name. Um, <laughs> yes, That's Hayden. That's a name I haven't heard in a, a long, long time. time. Ah, yes, Hayden, Hayden, Hayden. Hayden. We're seeing more of of him in press and interviews recently yeah have you seen any of the obi-wan uh press no i haven't i've been like um i haven't actually seen a lot of that no but um yeah it's it's truly amazing and it's great to see him uh kind of uh back he just has that kind of warm presence to him and uh totally i'm just uh i'm so happy he's back as vader slash anakin Mm um and, uh, yeah as of um as of recording this obi-wan is set to premiere uh tomorrow so yeah uh, I'm, l- I'm looking forward to it yeah hopefully it's he great. it's the first two episodes tomorrow so yeah, uh, we'll episodes, see um yeah. if he shows up in uh, those or brother brother not later but you know either uh, way very soon we'll be seeing him again oh yeah yeah definitely uh it is six episodes so i would assume that we probably see him at the end of episode two that makes I, sense. that's that's my um kind of prediction anyway for for the second time in the row he'll be making his debut in episode two of star wars <laughs> yeah um but yeah no like speaking of which 
you know, with all of the actors who have appeared in the prequels, like I, I'm not talking about like the the original uh, one with uh, Jake Lloyd. You know, he had yeah. his own kind of issues and stuff like that. Um, but with everybody, I mean, Ewan did a lot after the prequels. He was oh, pretty much everywhere. Sam Jackson. I mean, you know, <laughs> Sam Jackson. One of the most well-known actors ever, probably. Who is he? I don't know. Um, Natalie Portman did he? a lot of wonderful work. And I suppose Ian McDermott didn't really do much. But, mm. you know, he was around um, kind of... Um, but you see, Hayden did stuff. He was in that movie with Jessica Alba called The Wake. I kind of liked it. I thought it was very, very good. And I thought he was really good in it. Mm. Uh, he also did that movie Jumper, which didn't get too well, too well received. But I thought it was okay. And I thought mm. he was very, very good in it. Um, My main issue is he's done, like, recent stuff. But it's like very, very buried, and for good reason, because it's shit. Um, I did, um, there was a few years ago, but like he did that, like, didn't he do that one, like, was it a samurai film or something with like Nick Cage? It was, yes. Um, I've that. seen some of it, it wasn't very, very good. It was, um, some, some of it, and it's it's filmed really ugly, in my opinion. Uh, uh, I just, it didn't really stand out to me. But he is a really, really uh, talented actor and really, really wonderful. I just wish that, you know, um, someone would pick better projects for him. But, um, and there was this one called The Last Man with Harvey Keitel. I was really looking forward oh. to watching it. And it, it was just not very good at all. Like, I didn't really understand the story. Um, and he was so wonderful in it. And the cinematography was great. It was a Metallica song. I was well on board. And it was just... I, I, I couldn't, if you put a gun to my head and asked me to explain the plot, I just couldn't. <laughs> things go boom and people went ah, I think. Ting, and, things go boom and everyone's screaming and there's explosions. There, there was footage. Um, <laughs> uh, you, but Man, you can you can say what you will about it. It really was one of the movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, now Hayden is back in Ahsoka. And it oh, was yeah, back Soka in Obi-Wan. I think we're going to see a lot of Hayden around. I, I do believe so. I think yeah. it was probably because he had um his kid and stuff like that true, around true. as well. Um, I mean, like his wife, Rachel, um, wasn't in much either. She, I, she, was, um, she was in that Aubrey Plaza movie and she was in Jumper with him. But other than that, she hasn't done much either. And he hasn't done, like, they've done stuff, but, like, very, very under the radar and, like, kind of, mm. you know, I just, I want to see uh, him back. And uh, I think we're going to get that. Um, uh, I hope that, not not only just with Star Wars, but I want to see other things with him and uh, for wonderful projects uh, that he's going to pick out and uh, hopefully be incredible in. Um, especially on the big screen, because I, I think that's uh, he has uh, such a likable presence about him. I think he could um, appear in something uh, on the big screen, definitely. Like he was in that Emma Roberts film a couple of years ago. Oh, um, what was it called? Love Italy, I think. Oh. Um, uh, I've heard he was okay in that, and I heard that movie was uh, pretty fine. But I, I'm just, uh, I just hope that he uh, does. Uh, a lot more and we have uh, a certain almost like that sort of movie star presence to him uh, i just yeah. i hope we get that but, yeah the uh, thing with him is like you know i feel like um since he came out like right out with star wars and like they kind of like defined him for so long it's almost like you know people we've never really like seen a chance to had a chance to see more of him but, like most people have unless like you know actively like looking for hayden christensen roles like uh like like you are obviously of course keeping up with him but um yeah, no, I definitely feel like he's somebody like I would I would, I want to see more of him just because like you know I feel like he has more to give you know yeah, than what we've does. seen of him before. He does, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, with Obi Wan, uh, tomorrow hopefully mm. that people see it and they're like, yeah, this 
more of them, and then it's like uh, it becomes the next Chris Pratt, where he's just in everything. <laughs> I'd love it. I'd honestly love to live in that world. Oh my god! Like they cast Chris Pratt as Mario, so like. Hayden Christensen gets cast as Link in the Legend of Zelda movie. Oh my god, yes. That actually kind of work. I would work, yes. That would yes. kind of work. I'd love that. that I'd watch it five times. I would see it five times on release day. <laughs> five times on release day. Yeah. I camped out <laughs> in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> you got your tent up outside the cinema. Oh, no, the tent is in the cinema. I, <laughs> oh, of course. I, of I, course. Can't, I, I went into the bathroom... And, like, I hid, like, in, like, the sewer and then waited for the place to close and then camped in the yeah. thing. I like had the, popcorn like, for Like, breakfast. the security guards try to kick you out and then you just, like, you just, like, disappear into the vents, into the <laughs> ceiling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um... I want to yeah. see Hayden first. <laughs> I'm just there in the cinema. The credits are rolling and I'm waiting for the next show. And I'm just like sitting there. <laughs> I fall asleep. The cleaner's like, um, hello. I'm like, yeah, hi. Yeah, but now, um, yeah, if they had, uh, yeah, if they had to like do that, um, like you can give a link of voice in the movie. Like, I, I guess for now, that's my fan cast. Yeah, Aiden no, it's, it's a good, it's a good fan cast, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could do a lot of stuff. Uh, I'd love to see him in a different genre, definitely. I'd love to see him in, like, a Western movie. Totally. Um, I think, um... Here's my concept. I think they should do a sequel to Jumper. Oh, God. Where, but, like, hear me out. It's, like, it's the same character and everything. But this time, like, he gets really into knitting. And he opens an actual Jumper store. And it becomes, like, a down-to-earth, like, comedy <laughs> drama about, like, him, like, running this shop. And, like, you know... Interacting with the community and everything, like, while he's dealing with his family issues. <laughs> Sorry. Same character and everything, but just, like, <laughs> this new phase of his life. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I, I just had the the movie in my head and how dramatic it was. And this yeah. <laughs> perfect sequel shot. <laughs> Oh, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> um, I suppose. Um, oh God, I I was going to pick someone else, but I can't think right now. Oh, um, weren't you saying uh, Jennifer Lawrence earlier before we started? Uh, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. Like, um, seems like a. Yeah, kind of feels a bit weird, like, put her in here, but, like, she did kind of, like, go away for a few years. She did, and I will say that she did uh, for a, a really a long period of time, It was, even before, like, COVID and stuff. Mm. Literally, the last thing she did was that last X-Men movie. Yeah, and, um, yeah, Mother was before that, right? I believe so, yeah, it okay, was. Yeah. Um, she was with Darren Aronofsky at the time. Yeah, um, and I think the last X Men movie. I don't think that was a great note to leave off on, um, specifically for a character. I kind yeah, of apparent, yeah, apparently, yeah, apparently she phoned it in. According to people, no, I yeah. haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, so I can't really judge the performance. But apparently, that was uh, the talk of. I kind of got the vibe too. That like she just like wasn't really like her heart wasn't in it at that point. Yeah, um, but definitely with something like Don't Look Up, hmm. which I didn't adore whatsoever um i wasn't a big fan but she was excellent in the movie yeah she was definitely very very uh good and it was great to see her act alongside so many uh wonderful talented people like dicaprio mm. or streep or you know she's literally like with the gods of like acting <laughs> it, it, like it, it, it's all subjective really but you know yeah. basically like those two have been at like a lot of award shows and stuff like that and, and you know have you know been up there as like you know the talks of s some of the best actors when people are having conversations so to be around that must have been wonderful and to work with people like Shamile and uh, Hill and you know all these actors and um you know she she um she is really really tremendous like stuff now I've seen some of Winter's Bone I think I watched the movie, but I, like, didn't pay attention to a lot of it. But the bits I did kind of look up at, I, I think I need to watch it again, definitely, to kind of get the emotional impact of it. 
but she was really really incredible in it and i i definitely stuff like that and the hunger games and other things uh seeing stuff like that i think having her back in that sort of role on the big screen definitely could uh be beneficial and definitely very very welcome and i think we're getting that uh i think we're close to that totally the um La Renaissance, the La Renaissance, yeah. yeah, let's call it that. Um, I'm not sure what else she's confirmed for as of now. Um, you know, there was that movie, um, Don't Look Up, but other than that, but I, I do think that did very, very well. So we will probably yeah. see more, um, along the lines, uh, soon. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more from her. Um, definitely. Uh, what would you like to see her in? Uh, what kind of genre? What I like to see her in. Hmm. She hasn't really done a lot of comedies before. I think that'd be quite interesting. To yeah, see. I mean, she was uh, very, very funny in Don't Look Up. I thought. I agree. Uh, she I had, agree. And she was in that uh, Passengers movie with Chris Pratt, where she oh, had. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Um, she has like kind of a comedic elements i guess um but yeah no um she could do uh stuff i i'd love to see her in you know like uh the kind of what emma stone was doing for a while where she would like appear in uh some stuff like easy a and uh or like that Haley steinfeld movie edge of 17 or you know uh, i feel like jennifer could do something like that even with like an ensemble or like a road trip movie or you know that that would be um that'd be quite cool uh, i think totally hayden christensen and jennifer lawrence on a road trip i'd watch it i'd watch it three times is this like is this um like a film or is this like going to be one of those like travel documentaries oh my god <laughs> What if it's a film in which it's a travel documentary and it's Hayden Christensen with, like, the personality of, like, someone like Calm's Corner? Oh, my God. And he's, like, a vlogger on, like, YouTube and he's, like, really famous. Like, <laughs> like it's Borat where it's, like, they're playing characters, but, like, in, in reality. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, he actually interacts with people, but, like, he doesn't have... Like, if people don't recognize Hayden or something. Oh like <laughs> it's like Tropic Thunder where, like, you know, when Robert Downey Jr. put on, like, the black makeup or something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm Hayden in a calm school in a type of situation. I like that a lot. Yeah. Hey, yup. Welcome to Anakin's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> right, now this little spasmoid Obi-Wan... He underestimates my power. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Even with speaking of like Jennifer Lawrence, like she um, she has uh, a certain. You know, some people give her a lot of slack and call her like annoying and stuff like that. I think she's kind of charming and kind of funny, and no, I think I she never, has that like, kind I of. I never found her annoying. Yeah, no, I've always found her to be kind of just that kind of positive energy mm. that's what i kind of get that kind of vibe uh, i don't find her fake at all i think she's just yeah like i literally see her and like there's so many like people out there even like interviewers that are like that and stuff and they don't get like i i think people uh, judge her too harshly in my opinion i think um I don't know. Uh, I I don't know her, but yeah, it would be uh, wonderful to have her um, back on screen, though. I think that would be uh, incredible. Um, Summer's Bone. Summer's Bone? Yeah. Or uh, that, Autumn's uh, that Bone. Summer's Bone sounds like uh, something dirty. No, it's... um. Oh, my God. It's a sequel to... Winter's Bone, god damn it. <laughs> I, yeah, so, I'm sorry. I, I have a filthy mind. Or uh, if... No, they are making Shadow and Bone season two. So yeah. she could appear in that. <laughs> Winter and Bone. Winter and Bone, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Oh god, what else? No, I, I, I don't know. I know people talk about like the Marvel stuff and all of that and like want her back as Mystique and Universe and you know, oh my god, is she going to be in Doctor Strange? Like, I mean, like <laughs> Ted was probably going to be in Doctor Strange. Well, like Ted the Teddy Bear? Yeah, oh prob- my god. probably was. Probably <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have watched talked that. About, talked about, yeah. Um, but I, I do... I think she needs to move on to uh, stuff mm. that's appealing to her. I feel like with the X-Men thing, like it would be good. I don't know. I, I would take one movie with her mm. maybe in like a small part, but I don't yeah. want her to kind of feel this burden that, okay, you have to do this. You have to. Uh, yeah. Put no, because I definitely costume. think like with X-Men, that's one thing where she's like, she kind of just like lost interest a bit, which like, you know, given, even like all the films like back to back you'd be making then you know you yeah, would after no, a bit. yeah no you would definitely um i mean like there was like apocalypse and there was like this mm. and that and i was like god i i think a lot of people lost interest at that point but um yeah no um i'm i'm optimistic about more lawrence i, I think it'd be really, yeah. really good um so yeah who else could uh, who else has uh, or is getting? Uh, uh, well, um, Winona Ryder again, like Brendan Fraser, so only like for years everyone was. Well, I mean, I know, like I know personally, like if people wanted to come back, I don't know, if, like there was like that much outcry, but like definitely like with Stranger Things coming out, um, that if I put it back in the spotlight, and um, I haven't been keeping too close attention to it, but um, she hasn't actually done a lot. Aside from Stranger Things, not really like anything too mainstream anyway. Uh, you're right about that, yeah. But uh, do you think like once uh, Stranger Things finishes up, uh, we'll be seeing more of it then? I I fucking hope so. <laughs> to be honest, she <laughs> What's was a uh, fucking language. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I re- really I I adore that woman. I think mm. she's tremendous. I know there was like that whole thing with like people giving out about her shoplifting or something. Yeah, which is like. I mean, like, I fucking shop. Have you seen the prices? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, I don't play for Compared to, like, everything else that's going on, like, who cares? <laughs> it's not like she killed someone. Yeah, that's true. Or, um... um eight people. Uh, in the fridge. Um, you know, she was in that movie with Keanu. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, um, and she was also... I think she had a small part in Black Swan as well. Um, oh. The Darren Aronofsky movie. Uh, I, I'm i not going to look up the Wikipedia, but apparently, no. Was she supposed to be in that Adam's Family thing? Or was that um, a fan cast? I think it was probably a fan casting. Uh, I think it was a I fan cast. I think it, yeah. yeah, it probably was. Yeah. Because, you know, like of a role in Beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah. She kind of does seem fitting for that. But yeah, yeah, that, that she was really, really does. Yeah. Probably just a fan cast. Yeah. I, it, makes, or, it makes too much sense, so it has to be a fan yeah, cast. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, but no, I, I genuinely, after Stranger Things finishes up, I hope we get more of her. Uh, I genuinely would love it. Um, even if it was a Netflix, another Netflix property... Mm. Or if it was something, what what seems to be on the line is definitely uh, more air house stuff. That's what a lot of actors are drawn to because yeah, they kind of uh, boost their careers in a certain way, and they have uh, more stuff to say with uh, a lot of the stories that are uh, being told. Even with Netflix, even in their like uh, dark horror and fantasy suspenseful stuff, they do really really good stuff. Even though. Mm. Like, the CGI is pretty fine, uh, for the most part, not with, like, yeah. stuff. Like, um, what was it? what was that, um, Death Note thing, or something uh, like yeah. that? Uh, I, I mean... I don't remember, dis- yeah. I, I haven't seen the film since it came out. Yeah, I have, I've never seen it, so... Uh, I don't know, I've heard... I don't remember the CGI. I, I remember people bad. complaining. I mean, like, people complain about it all the time, sure. There was that thing with fucking She-Hulk or something. Yeah. People complaining about that. There was, um... That recent Thor trailer came out, uh, I think it was like yesterday, the day before, and people were literally like complaining about the CGI. And like, lads, come on, like, <laughs> there's other stuff. Yeah, uh, it's like, you know. I can forgive, like, I can forgive, like, underwhelming CGI if, like, yeah, everything can. else is good. Like, the way I see it, like, some, like, 
good CGI, it should benefit an already good film, but it can't like make a break one for me. Yeah, that's that's I true. I, I mean, I I think some of the effects in um like Gods of Egypt look genuinely pleasing, mm. but I've just heard that a lot of the movie is pretty terrible. So yeah, um, I haven't seen it now, but um, I've heard. But uh, Winona back back to her. I think she's definitely with Stranger Things. Yes, but I think genuinely with uh projects, I I I don't see her appearing in a Marvel movie. Like it probably I might it. happen, but I I don't think she's drawn to something like that. I think she'd be drawn more to uh something like an independent horror film, like a good one, not one of those like shitty ones that are just thrown on Amazon or something. But like uh, a really yeah. Like a genuinely thought out kind of a uh, good one. That's uh, mm. kind of the talk of the town, really. Um, I, I could s- see her like making guest appearances in like a Disney Plus show or something. Uh, not Star Wars or Marvel, but something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 de- I definitely think we're probably going to see uh, more of her. That, that would be my prediction. That would be my genuine prediction. Would be more, uh, Winona, definitely. Yeah. Uh, even uh, with an animation and stuff like that, how popular that is now, and how uh, not easy, but you know, it's kind of a funner kind of way to get cash, I guess. Um, yeah. Especially when it appeals to uh, a wide variety of audiences, I could see her uh, doing something like that. Uh, I I definitely see her kind of making more of commitments to you know something that kind of uh, widens her range of uh dramatic stuff like uh, those kind of call me by your name or one of those things definitely yeah. i could definitely see her uh doing that um even like working with darren aronofsky again because uh, she was in black swan not i don't think she has a very very big role in that movie mm. um but yeah she's um she could definitely do even more stuff like Stranger Things as well, hopefully. Um, and just hope for the best anyway. Or, you know, uh, even a Marvel film, but like a different kind of Marvel movie where it's something like The New Mutants, where it's mm. uh, more kind of independently based or something like WandaVision where it's not, you know, it doesn't turn into a big kind of feast of, action at the very end or whatever yeah it's more uh kind of smaller scale i guess yeah smaller scale yeah uh definitely uh winona could be mm. uh it would be great to have her um i do more comedy actually because she definitely had a, a great time uh you could tell with keanu and stuff like that doing stuff like that yeah um but yeah yeah definitely uh more uh, Winona, uh, Winona is definitely uh, someone that's uh, more welcome. Like you know, you kind of look left and right, and you see your Nicole Kidman's, or you see mm. you know just you you again, like you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, it's just like you know you want to see like them. Oh, it's it's when, oh okay, huh, that's that's interesting. Now I love the Norman, but like come on, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Or, like, you know, Russell Crowe again. Or, like, you know, Kate mm. Blanchett again. And like, I love those actors, but, like, there's, like, a certain time where you're just, like, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of more. I I think we're seeing... Now, I didn't know him before The Mandalorian, to be honest. At all. But Pedro Pascal has become such a a wonderful presence on screen and recently he's appeared in that movie with cage i know he's in game of thrones apparently yeah and uh and narcos i think were his two biggest ones before the mandalorian i haven't seen the narcos i've never even Neither i've heard way. the title but uh yeah that's that's cool yeah uh i think we're living in a, a, a pascal age and pascal age yeah uh, i think he's going to be in the last of us uh, that's it yeah movie. I remember that and um, um, I do think that's good casting mm, yeah uh, I just I was hoping that he'd be in the Puss in Boots movie as, he should be still yeah or like in Shrek 5 as like a different like puss or something puss is like, long lost brother yeah 
No, I'd, I'd love that. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing, actually. <laughs> I love it. He has a certain voice about him that he really fits animation. I yeah. Believe. I'd like to see him do some... I think he'd be good for some voice acting. He really would. Like, um, I suppose uh, another one speaking of Mandalorian is Carl Weathers. Yeah, yeah, Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers is awesome. Like Absolutely. in the Rocky movies, right? You have Stallone, which I love Stallone, mm. and I love everybody else. I love all their performances, but Carol is like on a different level. Like he is so into it. He has that sort of uh, that confidence and that swagger. He just owns every scene he's in in the whole uh, franchise with every movie he's in, and um. You know, he was in Predator. Mm. And then after that, he wasn't really, like... You know, you'd see him in other things, but he you never... He was never, like, one of those, like, Bruce Willis or, you know, like, one of those yeah. uh, actors or, you know, Danny Glover or, uh, you know, just... Uh, he some... was always in these big roles, like... He was always in these big films, but as more of a supporting role, so, like, he doesn't get, like as much of the acclaim even though mm. like he did play a big part and all that yeah um and i'm hoping with uh mandalorian that mm. we do uh see more of him because uh, yeah. I, I think he's a tremendous actor mandalorian and... seems like it's like bringing back like a lot of like acclaimed like 80s stars because now we true. have Kyle weathers then we had um michael bean and like now christopher lloyd's like gonna be in yeah. the next season that's yeah, yeah very yeah. mad yeah and um you know, there's uh, that uh, other, you know, th- that other thing. Oh, God. I have to say something about Obi-Wan, and I, it's kind of to do with uh, the rena- rena- Renaissance and stuff. Mm-hmm. And here's my question. Who is voicing Darth Vader? See... Like, I guess James Earl Jones. We'll have to wait and see. We'll find out when Darth Vader appears. Like, I was kind of like, I don't know, like, I was assuming, like, Anakin was going to, like, show up in flashbacks mostly, but, like, I don't know, like, it, like, because, like, with Aiden Grishin, like, doing, like, so much, like, press stuff, it's like, I'm thinking, like, like, he's doing so much, like, he has to be, like, in, like, a Unless there's, like, a lot of flashbacks, like, they're making his world out to be, like, pretty big in it. So I'm thinking, like, mm. is there going to be, like, <laughs> like, I'm trying to think, like, is there going to be, like, a lot of scenes of them, I'm not, oh, like, Darth Vader unmasked, maybe? Maybe. That'd be pretty weird, but, like, I mean, I could see them maybe doing that. Yeah. Um, It is pretty early Vader, though, so. It could be. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking, because, like, it's, like, right after, like, you could, like, believably, like, cast him in it and then just, like, have him, like, you know. I was like, I have a bunch of like fucked up makeup, and then just like, it wouldn't look like even too weird because like you know, true. Yeah. Like the time gap, like from like like obviously like he's he's older now, but like again like yeah, I, no, it since works he, like, well. It works yeah, well, it works right? well like in context. Yeah, um, but James came back for Rogue One, and he also had that cameo in Rise of Skywalker. So I don't mm-hmm. really see uh, any. Uh, I, I think it's going to be James, and that's where I want to talk about. I want uh, James Earl Jones to come back to kind of mainstream stuff. Now, I know he was in uh, Coming to America for his uh, cameo. And I know he was um, in this certain film where he didn't appear for much. But, you know, he's kind of, you know, you, you don't really hear his voice anymore that much yeah. anymore. Like your voice was rolling the like the Lion King remake. But, you he know, did. yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll just, we'll just be yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, and um, I just, I want to see, sorry, I want to see more uh, of him uh, doing uh, voice roles, even if it's um, not for long and stuff like that. Mm. Um, Even if it's for a DreamWorks movie or if it's narrating something, I, I just, I, I think we need it, you know. I don't want Ryan Reynolds' annoying voice doing... <laughs> I want James Earl Jones' a soothing voice, you know? Uh, that's, yeah. all, that's all I ask for, you know? I don't need Ryan Reynolds to voice fucking SpongeBob or narrate yeah. it. I want... Yeah, we James need Earl James Earl Jones. Jones to voice SpongeBob. No, I mean narrate, <laughs> like, you know, like... Oh, you, narrate, okay. Yeah, I just... Fucking that... 
Ryan's voice annoys me. Like I love him. He's great. He's funny. But it's I I don't I am I'm sick of his narrating things. But that's just me. I well I just that soothing voice of James is better. Yeah. Uh, something about it is just more fun. Now I know he was in uh, Click and he was in Scary Movie and he oh, like yeah. make cameos and like stuff like that where he do voice stuff. I just hope I I, w- I want to get back to that because it's fun to kind of have him uh, do stuff. So yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I I think mm. like even um. If they do that, um, you know, more Marvel villains and stuff, mm. just to have one voice by him would be kind of cool. That would be cool. Or like, you know, it's like a mystic stone or something. And like, <laughs> it like starts talking and it's like really booming and stuff. And it's him. Yeah. That'd be cool. I'd like that. Or if like they were all like trapped in this like dimension and stuff like that. And like you just hear his booming voice and like, smoke and stuff. That'd be cool. I mean, new that. ideas here. I mean, like it's like my fantasy mind just, yeah. you know, it just has his voice in there. Now, I don't mean to be mean to Mr. Reynolds, but um, I just, I don't know, I'm just obsessed with um James that I, I'd want that. So, hmm. um, yeah. No, is there any like other actors out there that that could get a Renaissance though? I'm thinking, um, Pattinson. Has Robert Pattinson, yeah, he's had his uh, Batman fame and stuff like that. Yeah, Kristen Stewart has had uh, that as well. Um, especially uh, being at the Academy Awards. Um, and n- n- nominated. F- I don't know if she won, but she was for uh, Spencer Diana Spencer. She was in that film, and apparently, it was received very very well. And she's done uh, really really wonderful for herself. And there's one that has it though, and that is the the third one, and that is Taylor Lautner. Yeah. Now Taylor Lautner has been in uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which is cinema. Yeah. Um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl is like the only movie to exist. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, he was in. I was about to say the Wolfman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was in Twilight, obviously, and he as the Wolfman. Yes. Uh, he was in that abduction movie, which I heard yeah. wasn't very, very good. Um, uh, he hasn't done very much other stuff. I I believe he was in that ridiculous six. Yeah, and that was the last thing he was in that I know of. Yeah, no, I heard I saw this trailer for like this soccer movie or something. Um, I think it was Kevin James was in it. I think really. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a very weird film. It's like something. It's a it's a happy Madison production, I think. So yeah. uh, I'm not really looking forward to that. But um yeah, I, I want more of Taylor Lautner, to be honest. I think he could I, I think he has uh, the guts to do something good. I think he has the chops for it and I think that he deserves to come back in something good. Yeah. I uh, I think he, he really does have that uh presence about him and I'd like to him to step away from comedy, mm. but uh, I wouldn't necessarily cast him in necessarily action. But he can do that. He can do that. He has yeah. that presence as well. But I'd love to see him go outside that pretty boy sort of thing, and like go like full kind of uh, almost revenant style. Revenant style, oh, I wow. guess, or like you know, like a Darren Aronofsky or like an Airhouse picture, you know, like uh, something you know, like uh, lost in like you know, an I like an island and stuff like that, uh, or you know, just something really, really like dramatic stuff. I, I think he has a really, really good presence for that, even if he was like a loving father and like he was with his daughter or something and it was just the two of them. Something like that. Just the idea of uh, seeing him as kind of show like a vulnerable side to a hero and like kind of mm. make it, you know, like a proper three act structure, like an actual film. You know what I mean? Uh, film really well. And, you know, I'd love to see him in something like that. I think he'd be really, really um, wonderful. 
in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely think, um, Eric, as we were talking about, like, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, it's like, you know, Twilight kind of defined them at the beginning, and it's like, you know, for a while people thought just, like, that's all they thought about them, but, um, you know, now nowadays, obviously, like, Robert Pattinson's become kind of like um, the, the critical darling, I guess you could say, and uh, yeah, Kristen like, Stewart's done, like, very well um, in a lot of, like, great films. Yeah. Since. So, um, yeah. I think... I, w- I would like to see like if Taylor Lautner um I I I, I for want of a better word is is hiding secret talent I, that that's, that seems like a weird way to put but yeah if he's got um you know if he's got some range that like you know we haven't seen yet I feel like it is there I mean he, he's he's shown like some confidence in what what his younger work but mm. I I think it's there I really really see it um. I think he could do something uh, tremendous. I really, really do. I just think that he needs to sit back, pick the right script. I know they're hard to find. I've been <laughs> looking myself. They're really shit. When you look at like the shit that people come in, like, hey, look, I'm an independent. I'm so artsy. Look. And it's just like this like dog shit that you're reading. Um, a script, a good scripts and the good outlines of stories are like really hard to find because people feel like everything's been done so they just do what other people have been doing and that's why mm. we have so many uh shit films that come out and like to make a good movie is really hard but i think for taylor to pick something good i i think that's where his career needs to go it needs to go right okay let's let's do something powerful and i think it could be cool mm. Uh, even if it was like for can <laughs> or something or if it was like I don't, I don't know about Netflix because you know obviously Netflix has done a lot of good things but I, I don't know about like opening up and you just see new Netflix movie with Taylor Lautner and you're like eh no but like something more kind of out there and artsy and you just see like just you know the camera not cutting away and you see uh taylor just acting his heart out um with uh you know the the pain of something i don't know i just i really think he needs to go that that route but uh i don't know i've known um or you know he could do more comedy but it's just the thing with comedy it's it's i don't i don't think like he's funny, he's funny, but mm. I just I don't know, especially with uh, the way Happy Madison is uh, most of the time nowadays. Yeah. Uh, for a, a very very long time, um, it's just I I don't know, I I just don't know, um, about uh, sticking with that, but um, yeah, or like you know he could you know he he does like a lot of uh, piss takes on. Uh, Twilight and the Wolf and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I I think he needs to kind of go uh, out of his out of that kind of comfort zone and out of uh making uh the money and like really kind of do uh something really fun and dramatic and uh yeah I'd love to like, see him in something like that to be honest. Totally. Um. Even a war movie, I think. A war movie? Oh yeah. No, yeah. I can I can imagine that. Yeah. Uh, any anything? Any final thoughts? Um. Yeah. Even though I definitely agree, like you should step away from the Happy Madison type of thing. I will say the one good thing that um, partnership did give us was uh, that video of him teaching uh, Adam Sandler how to dab. I think that was a culturally important moment. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was incredible. Dab. Like you just, you just you get your arms up and you just dab. Ooh, oh no. I, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. <laughs> I love the <that> video. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 artistic. That was a moment in culture. That was. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. It's um. It's really interesting. Like, there's uh, been a lot of uh, movies being made nowadays. Like, and like, there's so many actors that have uh, come back for different things and stuff. Um, uh, especially nowadays, you know, with Hayden and all that, and like, there's so many things where you're just like, no, I, I don't, I don't really see 
uh, people uh, doing that and then like oh you just oh they're back you know mm. <laughs> uh, like Mark Hamill uh, even like we yeah. I for a long time I didn't think that uh, episode 7 would be a thing I thought it was just kind of a rumour and then it got bought and Mark Hamill was back so. yeah yeah Yeah, any any other uh, thoughts on uh, people and stuff? Um, any other thoughts on people? Um... Oh, Jesus. I just remembered something bad. Okay. Remember that lad 50 Cent? Oh, that lad 50 Cent now. Yeah, he's going to be in the new Expendables film, apparently. Uh, in the new Expendables film? Are you serious, yeah. boy? Oh, no, that's... It ain't... Oh, no, that's madness, boy. Fuck's sake, boy. He should be upgraded to a dollar. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure, fuck it. He's just like, with inflation and everything, like, he'll, he should be a dollar at this point. <laughs> yeah. Is this just such a weird, like, choice? I yeah. Think. <laughs> like, they couldn't get back Terry Crews because apparently, um, they were fighting with him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they seem to be fighting with a lot of people that franchise Bruce Willis and, like, 50 Cent. And, uh, I guess are, it's like, I guess it's kind of bound to happen, like, when you're getting, like, what, like, 20 different people who are all, like, leading men, quote-unquote. That's true, that's true. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's so strange, though, that, um, you know, something like, it feels like the anti-Fast and Furious, it feel, it's, it's weird <laughs> now, especially looking at this cast, it just feels odd. Um, like, there isn't much... Like compared to like something like Fast and Furious, like this it this feels more like small a smaller production than the mm. other movies. It's it's weird. Um, but yeah, I never thought that we'd see a comeback for Fifty Cent. <laughs> Fifty Cent's acting career, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, my personal like, personal like the people like I wanted and I I want. I mean, I guess currently want, yeah, because, I mean, they could slap in in the Expendables for his, um, I mean, Keanu, because, like, you know, John Wick's doing great yeah, for him. Yeah, like, like, Keanu's there, Nick is there, Pierce yeah. Brosnan's there. I think, um, I mean, yeah, like, you have, like, every currently live James Bond could be in it as well. I think, um, uh, Ian McShane. <laughs> Ian McShane, yeah. Like, come on. Like. Yeah, it's, no, it's like, um, they Danny could, Glover Danny Glover yeah no Carl Weathers uh, yeah, Kurt got, Russell like, like there's so many uh, Danny Trey like you know there's so many like, has the, Danny Trey not been in them yet no he hasn't I, that seems like exactly the sort of thing he'd be it, it is <laughs> to be honest he probably appeared in the knockoff one <laughs> <laughs> the, the expungibles <laughs> with with Louis Ferrigno with Louis Ferrigno yeah <laughs> but no like you got like you got all of them like uh I think like Pedro Pascal would be like really Pedro, good. Pedro, yeah, Pedro, yeah. Expendables four, they got um, just like a lot of good choices. Ben Affleck, even, I'll, I think it would be entertaining in it. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. But now we we just have, what is it, Fifty Cent, um, some of his friends, Tony Jaw, which I I love Tony Jaw. I think he's cool. Mm. Um, Megan Fox, which is an odd choice. Uh, she's kind of yeah, no, I, no, I, I can, I yeah, it's cool. I, I think she's um, she's kind of had her own renaissance herself, and she's yeah. been doing good, good on her, um, but yeah, like other than that, like why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder, like, did they approach Fifty Cent, or did he approach them? Because like, I could see it going either way. <laughs> He was uh, considered for uh, the Terry Crews role, I think. Oh. Uh, at, at that point, yeah. I like to replace Terry Crews? No, like to... Uh, if Terry Crews wasn't cast... Or like he was considered for the role uh, before oh. Terry Crews was cast. Oh, okay. So that's probably why. <laughs> okay, that does make sense then. Even Mark Wahlberg could be in... Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of people like you could be in it. Yeah. So, and, and but yeah, no, that, that's one of the reasons, like, why, like, you know, for the uh, renaissance of mm. wonderful actors is to not have these stars, you know what I mean? These people 
that you recognize the name, but they're not actors. They're not like these, uh, you know, you see all these like animated movies where it's like Snoop Dogg is like a hedgehog or something. <laughs> or like Snoop a por- hog. Yeah, or a porcupine, you know, and it's like, they're not there because they're funny actors. It's because they're, there they're for the, the name and the name, they, yeah. to market the thing, uh, to market the product. Oh, look what we have. I don't mean to like cast just voice actors but mm. you know there there comes a time where you know you're looking at like movies like this and you're just like there's so many like people that are better fitted for this job why did you not consider them and yeah. just cast some you know like Kanye West and like Fast and Furious <laughs> 10 or something um, oh man or like Kanye West as like Shrek <laughs> no, he he plays one of Shrek's kids in the Shrek Five. Pete, Pete Davidson as well. Oh my god! Or um, oh yeah, not Elon Musk or something. Uh. <laughs> um, or um, who else is like popular now? Uh, no, I like Timothy Chalamet. I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, there's some some stars nowadays that are great. It's just. It comes to a point where you're just like, why are you even like considering these people for this when they're like singers and stuff like that, and not yeah, voice actors? And why you put them in the main front when you know you could? There's plenty of other talented people out there that could do it. Mm. So yeah, it's uh, kind of become it becomes a bit frustrating, and that's why uh, some people. Uh, some actors who haven't been used in a very, very long time deserve a sort of renaissance for themselves. So Absolutely. Um Yeah, is there any like uh, is there any other like actors that haven't appeared for a while that uh we could see? I'm thinking and I I mean, obviously, like, there's going to be, like, hundreds, of course, but, like, no one that I can think of right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I, love, um, you know, do you remember the, there was the original Dune, mm-hmm. um, and the, the actor's name is Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. I'd love to see him, like, in something, uh, even if it was, like, a short role in Dune 2 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of have him in there, you know, um, I think that'd be really, really cool. Uh, just to kind of give something, but I, I'd like to see him in more, uh, stuff like that, uh, or just in more things. Uh, speaking of uh, that original two movie and with Blade Runner as well is uh Sean Young. Uh, she was um, she was an actress, and uh, she kind of not went off the radar, but like kind of disappeared i guess um from like the mainstream sort of view and hasn't appeared in literally anything she was in like a dune like fan film which is weird and that's cool that like she agreed to be a part of that though i guess so yeah um fair play but yeah yeah apparently like in blade runner 2049 they they didn't even get her back they got like her permission uh, to use her cgi and like mm. she apparently i haven't seen both of the movies at all I, I haven't seen them but apparently she like walks into frame and like gets shot oh which is kind of odd <laughs> that, um, that is yeah so yeah there's, there's that sort of thing but yeah um there's like a lot of those actors it was like meg ryan well i don't know uh there was like a lot of Rob Lowe as well. You know, it's some, you know, people wouldn't want to see back, but some there is people that you want to see. But it just, it's kind of frustrating that, you know, they'll always go for uh, big, big people that are popular now, or, you know, they'll never, like, look beyond, uh, you know, people that have acted before in... Mm stuff and like they'll always go for streep they'll always go for 
you know, like big names just to have the big name. Yeah. When they could, and they'll always put the big name in like the forefront as well, which is really annoying when they could like literally have uh, them as a smaller thing and like put, you know, younger uh, or new talents in the forefront and stuff like that. Or like, you know, just kind of do something regular. And it was... It was kind of like that with uh, more legends, I guess, because there wasn't really much people in that that were recognized at the time. I will say, I really liked more legends. I'm not sure mm. you feel feel felt about it. I enjoyed it, yeah, yeah. I, I quite liked it actually. I don't think that failed because it was, you know, um, poorly marketed or if it didn't have that much big stars. I think it failed because Aquaman was playing next door. I think that's what it felt. I think that's. Uh, I think if they push the uh, date to something else, not January, because that's where movies mm. go to die, but um, genuinely like somewhere fitting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, release dates play a big part in success, like yeah. more than I think people would initially realize. Mm hmm. That that's the reason Kung Fu Panda three was pushed to January was because Star Wars uh, oh, came yeah. out. So, <laughs> and and then and then you see like Elf and that Chipmunks like released the same day oh, as Star geez. Wars, and then it's like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like at that point everyone was like so sick of making them. They did that just like guarantee would fail. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, I mean, I don't know what's even funnier though. The fact that like I don't know what's even funnier though, like the idea that like that was the case, or the idea that like. Some like people like were genuinely thinking like they could compete with Star Wars. <laughs> like no, no, I'm, I'm telling you, like, Elf and the Chipmunks, well, it's like really gonna. It's the road chip. Really, the road chip, you know. This is gonna be like a cultural moment, you know. Mm. Could we see Jason Lee make more of a cameo or uh, more of a uh, Renaissance? I, I mean, he was in that um, Kevin Smith movie, wasn't he? The recent one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I, think we could see, I think we could see that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that'd be cool. I, I think he'd uh, be good to have him in something. Um, so, yeah. I, I suppose since NCIS is kind of almost finished now, Chris O'Donnell, I think, would uh, come back and... I think so. Um, <laughs> imagine they bring him back in The Flash. No, <laughs> um, something else, please. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I wouldn't mind. I could imagine him in like, like a f a family kind of thing, more orientated that, towards yeah. that. I think, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I think something like that could be, uh, more welcome and more kind of, for him. I guess. That'd I agree. Cool. I agree. Um. Yeah, no, it's weird kind of picking out genres for certain people, I guess, but... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, I guess, what directors do and, like, casting directors and everything, so I guess not too weird. Yeah, I don't know, it's, um... But, see, at the end of the day is that a lot of these people are really, really wonderfully talented mm -hmm. and uh, really, really good at what they do, and that's why we want them back, because they're genuinely good talent, and... Um, you know, a lot of the movies that are made, and I, I'm not going to dog on Marvel movies because they're they're genuinely doing very very well, and I'm really happy with Phase Five and or Phase Four, um, and like they, with even like Doctor Strange, there are actors in it like the new, what's her name, Gomez something like that, and she was um. She was a pretty big part of the movie, and I've never seen her in anything before. Yeah. And, you know, I think stuff like that, you know, good. They're kind of uh, bringing out new talent and stuff, mm. and uh, they're bringing back kind of uh, more, uh, you know, older people, like uh, Alfred Molina, especially. Yeah, and, yeah, no. Um... Uh, you know, they, 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 they be doing stuff like that, and uh, that's good. Uh, they don't really play uh, by the books, and they always cast very, very interesting people. Um, unlike Fast and Furious, which literally cast 
they look up the word celebrities on Google and yeah. they, yeah. Um, I, I suppose the only thing that I've heard about uh, with the Eternals, now I, I think, no, I haven't seen the movie, but besides Angelina Jolie, Kit Harrington, Salma Hayek, and maybe one or two others, besides all them, the cast is dog shit, especially casting Harry Styles as Thanos' brother mm. is one of the most insulting pieces of shit I have I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to rant, but it was just, you know, you don't imagine that. Like, that's not a normal thing to kind of cast. You know, and it's really weird, isn't it? Like, Harry Styles was in Dunkirk, right? Yeah. People go on about, oh, he's amazing. He's brilliant. He sat on a train, stared out the window and said like two lines. That's all he did during the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's just so weird. Like anybody could have done that. Like, they should have. They should have cast me. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so kind of annoying that, like, you know, people who like big celebrities and stuff getting all these mm. kind of big sort of things. And um, I, I mean, it's it's been done in Hollywood like uh, for a long time. Like, it's kind of yeah. like the Hollywood playbook, really, uh, since like the beginning. Like, even, like, John Wayne, who I think uh, had really no talent, in my opinion. Um, you know, he was... He did plenty of stuff because people loved his warm presence or whatever. But, you know... Yeah. It is what it is, I suppose. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Um... Not on that specific topic, no. But any thoughts in general? Any thoughts in general? Um, I think it would be like really good um, to learn how to ride a bike. Lovely. Yeah. You could crash into Will Smith. <laughs> and then he will slap you. Yeah. Do you think... Um, <laughs> you think we'll see Chris Rock in anything now after this? Um, I, I think so. I, I think we might. Yeah. Um, it kind of feels like he's been away for a while as well. Yeah. I mean, he was in that Saw film. That, Spiral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jigs- um, no, not Jigsaw. Spiral. 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 Yeah. And that was like, he actually like, he, he did the story for that as well. Like, didn't he? Like, he went to the studio and like, he had an idea for like a new oh. film in the franchise, which is. um. Fair enough. Yeah. That's pretty cool that he did that. Yeah, it's it like is. actually like a passion project for him. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't know how it did, but uh, you know, uh, at least he did something mm. like that. Um, you know, there is like other actors and stuff like that out there that have done stuff where. You know, they're like, oh, it's so artsy, we're better than Marvel, but like, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, <laughs> was, like there was that whole Martin Scorsese thing, right? He did yeah. like a, a six hour picture uh, of um his friend Robert back um in a film that was titled The Irishman, which was a completely um a clickbaity title because there was no Irishman in it. Mm. Um, I, I was... Hoping and praying for like the odd low handling cameo. <laughs> this thing is a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, our low handling in jumper two. He wait. should be. We got to connect this to Father Ted. He, <laughs> it's Hayden who actually knits Dougal's blue jumper that he wears on that day <laughs> when he meets sister or something. Oh my god, we actually see like that whole story play out. Yeah, that's a subplot in it. And like it's actually Hayden who has to come in and save the day in the end. <laughs> that's perfect. Oh my god. No, that's that's uh, Oh my god. Very good. Yeah, very, very cool. Very cool. Um Aliens in the Attic Aliens in the Attic too. <laughs> with Ardell and Hayden. Aliens in the Attic is... Uh, 
I believe so, yeah. 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 Even with that, like, they didn't cast uh, two big uh, people in that. I mean, it was J.K. Simmons and yeah. a couple of other people, but mostly it was kind of a smaller group. I, I don't know. I, I, need, I think we need something like that again, you know, just a kind yeah. of a, a good mix of people and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we, we get that a lot with, like, the Marvel stuff. They have, like, a good sort of mix. Um, I just hope that they don't go through that kind of Fast and Furious route where they kind of have to kind of bring back or mm. bring in, like, a load of, like, big kind of celeb cameo people. Like, you know. Yeah, like um, Helen Mirren was, like, in Fast and Furious now, and it's like... You know, what, 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 it just feels what, like. What a, was the reasoning behind that? <laughs> what was the reason to have Cardi B in it? Was she in it? Yeah, she was in Fast the last one. Ah, yeah. I knew she was like on the soundtrack for it, but like, geez. no, she she appears in it. She has a role. Has she done any acting before even? She's gonna be in that new fucking Baby Shark th- show thing, isn't she? Yeah. That's yeah. What and like. James Jason Momoa is going to be in the new Minecraft film. Yeah. Um, like, I well, think you know, if they're going to cast Jason Momoa in the new Minecraft film, you know, like maybe they'll have to bump it up to PG thirteen. But I really think it would benefit the film if his character did get to say fuck. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I just think like it should be like completely like kid friendly for most of the film, like completely sanitized, and then just like in one scene he just says fuck. Yeah, it's just so odd like all these kind of yeah things that are happening and then like on the on the other side you know there's like independent movies made but like some are just so like overblown um where they just get too much kind of uh too much uh sort of uh self-enthusiasm i think hmm, self-indulgence where, yeah and um you know i i think you know it's people now, I'm not gonna sit here and like give out of Beverly Scott, but mm. but I will. Um, so he he did House of Gucky, right? Gucky, whatever House of Cookie. <laughs> um, apparently now I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really judge it. But I've heard that from a lot of people, people say that all of the leads in the movie feel like all that they're all in different films Mm. and like they just somehow like sprung them together um and then there's like the last duel which i didn't really i I don't know it's fine and matt damon and ben affleck and adam are great it's just something about it i don't know it just didn't really connect with me Mm. um and i'm not i'm not gonna like give out about it but he he complained really complained that it was all because of marvel films and all because of like big blockbusters and stuff and that's why he said people watching on their phone and everything he said that too yeah but that wasn't the issue the issue was the last duel was barely marketed yeah 100 percent um like, I didn't even, like, know it was coming out until, like, after it already came out. And, like, I really feel like that should have been on my radar. So, like, that goes to show, like, how good the marketing was, like, yeah. over here anyway. Yeah, and, like, um, <laughs> I found it on Disney+. Plus. I was like, oh, it's already out. <laughs> Shit. Because <laughs> I heard about it a while back and I was looking forward to it. Um, look, I'll, I'll give it a, a try uh, with the rest of it. But, um, I don't know, it, it was very hard to get into, but, yeah. you know. Maybe I was just angry. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's just stuff like that you read and stuff. It's it's very d- difficult sometimes to like hear different things like that. So, um, But yeah, no, I, I'd love for like younger directors to like take on uh, actors uh, that we mentioned and stuff like that. Mm. Or, you know, a, a really, really good... Uh, script that's not, like it doesn't have to be original IP but it can be you know something that connects with audiences and something that they can relate to and yeah. even 
uh, some of the, the actors that we mentioned uh, prior that it, it kind of it, it's something that they get excited for I, I think that's really important especially with uh, Miss Lawrence I mean y- you know th- that uh, X-Men stuff it probably was you know when, when she first started she was like oh hell yeah like this is kind of cool um, with you know first class and stuff uh, and then like as it went on she's like okay I'm kind of I kind of want to do something else and like with Don't Look Up, it probably hearing that premise was like, oh, comedy, cool. Yeah. What what's it? Oh, it's kind of referencing kind of climate change, and you know, I, I can I can see why someone would pick mm. that kind of a project. Um, so yeah, I just hope that they come up with uh projects that connect with people and uh, give them a feeling of. Uh, emotionality and uh, something like that, uh, because a lot of the a lot of the actors that we mentioned uh, deserve that, and they deserve uh, a lot of love, uh, especially uh, someone who uh, some of these actors have appeared in projects that kind of almost damaged their career and stuff like that, and almost killed uh, their career in uh, some love ways. Love guru, yeah, love for, guru for revengeance. I for, guess for revengeance. Um, there was that Master of Disguise movie with uh, Dana Carvey. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think the last movie he actually appeared in was the, um, not that, actually. It was a really, really short role where he played Cameraman 5 in, uh, what was that one? Jack and Jill. Oh, he was like literally a cameraman or something. It wasn't even a cameo in a good film. No. I mean, Johnny Depp was in that. Oh, and yeah, he was. Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> and this episode, it was just so bizarre, man. Like, what the fuck? But yeah. Um, I just think that, you know, picking projects uh, that are uh, written by uh, not just uh, writer B. That kind of goes with the thing, but you know, a writer that kind of comes up with something that you know th- this will definitely connect with audiences. This is definitely what, um, you know, they don't think they're looking for, but will find something, uh, creatively connective, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So I do have a question. Um, yeah. Say if you could pick like one of the actors we've brought up today and you could pair them with like any one director, who do you think would be a good uh, match? Oh, um, I'd, I'd actually try and do all of them, maybe, uh, if okay. we can remember them. <laughs> um, For... Sarah Michelle Gellar, I think it would be uh, kind of cool to see her work with someone like the... Uh, I guess, like, one one thing that kind of pops into my head is Lock and Key. Mm-hmm. Um, because that has a lot of uh, wonderful uh, people working on that, and the writing is just fantastic. Um, I, I think she'd uh, either as a mother or as some sort of uh, witch or, you know, so something uh, quite uh, different and kind of uh, quite dramatic. I think she'd uh, fit in really, really well in something like that or a uh, director of CODA or uh, some hmm. kind of call me by your name or something like that. Um, I, I don't know um, the actual names, but uh, something... Uh, like the directors of that, I think uh, Sarah would uh, kind of fit it with. What about you? Who would you pair up? Um, I think like the styles of comedy really go together. I'd like to see Mike Myers in a Taika Waititi production. That would be epic. Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, that, w- that would be uh, quite extraordinary, hmm. actually. That, w- that would be awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> um, 
I, I know she's uh, worked with him already, but I'd love Winona to work with Tim Burton again. I can definitely see that. I like. I mean, if we're gonna do a director comeback, I like definitely Tim Burton. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I I love Tim Burton. He's like one of my favorite directors. Mine too. And um, I pretty much like even like some of his remakes. I I kind of enjoy. Um, and I'd love to see him do, uh, more just more movies, even if they're mm. smaller, uh, more independent or something. Um, I think. Winona had a good relationship. She has done uh, quite a few movies with Burton and could she should do more and mm. uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, his, um, his last film was uh, Miss Peregrine, right? Uh, last movie was Dumbo. Oh, yeah, he did Dumbo. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. One that hasn't appeared in a while is Amelia Clark, actually. True, actually. Yeah, no, yeah. she hasn't. It was like, last thing she was in other than Game of Thrones was like Terminator Genesis, right? Uh, Solo. Oh, yeah, Solo. Um, yeah, I think that was like the last thing besides Game of Thrones, actually. Mm. Um, believe she's cast in a Marvel project. I don't know if that's true. And I believe she was <laughs> writing stuff for a character from Solo. Which oh. is kind of cool. Yeah, I don't know. She just decided to do it. And she was like, fuck it. <laughs> Why not? And then she was like writing her own uh, superhero stuff. Which is kind of cool. I That's don't know. good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, Multi-talented. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely her and more stuff. Because um, she's fantastic. Mm. Uh, I'd uh, pair Nicolas Cage with Sam Raimi oh my god <laughs> yeah that'd be mental it would be epic it would be cagey yeah and Raimi yeah Cage and Raimi Cage well, and Raimi um I'd also love you know since uh we're doing uh like a lot of uh comedic stuff for Hayden I genuinely think uh, Hayden Christensen in, you know, the director of the van uh, with this, um, what's his name? The the Irish actor. Oh, um. Not Gleason. Oh, God, what's his name? He was in Star Trek as well. Oh, I think I know the guy you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, I always freeze on his name. I don't know why. Yeah. Um. But yeah, either like you know, like Roddy Doyle sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think Hayden in one of those just to have him in there. That could work. Or uh, you know, if they did like a Dairy Girls movie, just to have <laughs> Hayden as a cameo. My or, God, Hayden at Dairy Girls, I'd be mad. <laughs> or um. Hayden and the Young Offenders. <laughs> um, I'd like to see that. As like a PE teacher. A PE teacher, yeah, no, that'd be good. Um. Also, in that film is Jamie Foxx as an electrician. Oh wow! Yes, just for no reason. Is that is that his elect is that his electro origin story now yeah yeah just no he's just <laughs> he appears as an electrician that's the joke yeah um also with oh god i forgot to mention oh yeah no i i i was going to mention logan lerman but he's kind of been doing kind of stuff yeah uh, recently been. uh especially with like bullet train uh coming soon mm. But um, I don't know. He he has kind of faded, like from the kind of, I guess the Star World. I guess you know, like yeah. you don't see him on like the big screen too much in the main kind of spotlight. And it's good to kind of uh, with all of these uh, people. I don't mean them to be you know the main cast or the main stars. I just mean yeah. it to be kind of you know a part of as something that's wonderful and kind of 
in the mainstream kind of eyes and uh, talked about not just because of the who's in it but because of the genuine uh, plots and the uh, the way that the films made people feel and stuff like that like call me by your name or coda mm-hmm. or something like that so um yeah no i'd love uh who who else have we mentioned um, we mentioned Nicolas Cage, and I would like to pair Nicolas Cage with Robert Eggers. Oh, is that the Northman guy? The Northman, yeah, yeah. The, the lighthouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, think, yeah. I think he'd be very suited to his style of film. Yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, he, he'd be fantastic. Mm. Um, oh, um... I would pair, you know, the director of Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. With Sarah Michelle Gellar. Oh my God, I could see that, yeah. Yeah, uh, something like that, like kind of doing a voice of a, a cool character or something. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar, she should show up in the new Kung Fu Panda show. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and that goes back to the... The weird casting as well, Rita hmm. Ora. Rita Ora, yeah, and she's done a bit of acting as well. Uh, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that, but you know what? Hopefully, it's um, hopefully it's good. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it suits it. Um, fading away though, is um, it's gonna be a bit weird if this is, uh whoever is going to find this but I want to talk about Gina Carano for a little bit mm-hmm. Um, I want to mention that you know she I had never seen anything with her before until The Mandalorian and then I like went back and uh, saw that she was in apparently she was in Fast and Furious with Luke Evans which that is that makes cool. sense uh, which is cool she was with Gal Gadot and, mm. uh, Luke Evans and that was cool Um, and she was uh, she was in Deadpool 2 I think was she? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think she was in Deadpool as um, a character. And yeah, I just, I think she um, she's really, really great. And the reason why I mention it, oh, but you want people to have a renaissance, it's because after Mandalorian Season 2, um, something happened on the interwebs. And um, they tried to blow up Gina Carano or something as this kind of uh, person that wasn't very good and tried to almost end her career mm. in a way. Um, and it wasn't her fault, I don't think. I think it was just the people in general. I think it was it got too overcrowded with just nonsense and, you know, it just kind of, it got too blown out of proportion and stuff and I don't know it just kind of seemed pretty like shitty of what people were doing and saying about her and stuff and um I mean she's in uh independent stuff now uh she has this new kind of movie coming but I don't know I kind of want because I was looking forward to with you know seeing her in the Mandalorian that you know she could do something that you know, was kind of more in the ma- more in the spotlight and see her mm. on the, on screen and stuff like that, and like her to n- not be like Gal Gadot and be Wonder Woman, but to be like something, you know, like uh, to be that next kind of that next step. You know what I mean? To like a leading woman territory. Yeah, like I I think she really has that. And, um, yeah, it's just, you know, just to kind of do something along those lines. Um, but now we're probably not going to get that, so. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people were, like, giving out, you know, why did you cast a wrestler as uh, this character? But I thought she was pretty good, like, in The Mandalorian. I don't no, know. I thought she was really good at the role yeah. in The Mandalorian, um... Like, I don't really get, like, the wrestler argument either. Like, there's been, like... <laughs> like, I, like, I don't get that argument. Like, literally, like, Dwayne Johnson's the highest paid actor now in Hollywood. And, like, he 
he started out as a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was like, um, you know, like we got like John Cena, like w- yeah. when he's not in Fast and Furious, he's doing really good stuff. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, no, I don't get the wrestler argument. Yeah, and I don't get any argument when it like the people giving out about her and stuff, and even like Bill Burr and uh, the guy who played Moff Gideon in um, the Mandalorian have like said, you know, people need to shut the fuck up about you know stuff on Twitter and stuff mm. like that because you know apparently she's just a genuinely nice person to be around and. Yeah. Like genuinely very very good and very easy going it's just because i mean like so many people have like tweeted much worse like you know what i mean yeah it's just i don't know i like i don't agree but you know i don't have to <laughs> um mm. but I, I just disagree with uh, the way a lot of people were saying and stuff and uh i just hope that um people wake up to it and be like yeah we wronged you gina okay here's your uh, work with us again. Yeah, I hope so because she deserves that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There's like so many like actors out there that you know because of their rep- it really damages their reputation. Like Will Will Smith now and mm. stuff like that, which I don't know. How I, I feel about it, to be I honest. I mean, like, the way I see it with, like, Will Smith is, like, what he did was stupid, but it's, like, in, like, the grandest scale, like, in the long term, like, who was really hurt by it? Chris Rock. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, but, like, even Chris Rock, like, he was out on, like, the next day, and he was sort of, like, joking about it. Like, he seemed, like, he seemed, like, find it, like, more amusing than anything. Yeah. And, and like... Yeah. Like, uh, like I mean, Jada was probably, like, the biggest, quote-unquote, like, victim of the whole thing in any way. And, like, she doesn't even seem, like, that bothered by it. And it's, yeah. like... Yeah. I guess, like, people say, like, it was shitty. And it was, like, okay, yeah, it was shitty. But it's, like... It's not, like, worth, like... Can- like, it's not, like, worth cancelling stuff he's in over it, the way I see it. Because, like... Yeah. Like, if he's getting, like, projects cancelled over it, it's, like... I mean, is it really so bad that it's worth, like, everyone else who was working on it losing a job? Yeah, yeah, that's Because true. it's being associated with them. And, like, in my opinion, like, it isn't anywhere near that bad, no. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like, as far as I'm concerned, like, as soon as, like, he apologized for it, like, that's... that It should have just ended there. <laughs> yeah, it should have. But, you know, it's, it's Hollywood after all, so... Uh, like, I heard uh, people like Jamie Kennedy giving out about it. Really? And, yeah, no, he, he did, like, a full stream about it. I watched it, and uh, he was um he was on about um how moments like this where he was allowed to go up there on stage and do that was because uh it was also the same reason why we put up with Harvey Weinstein for so long. And I, I don't I don't agree with that That's at all. That's a bold comparison it is, to make. <laughs> it is. And um I I I find myself disagreeing with Mr. Kennedy quite a lot, but um I think he's uh he's a bit too kinda vocal with stuff. And I, I think uh because he is, I think it's a reason why he's not appearing in a lot of Hollywood productions because I think he's uh full of um Clunk, uh, as clunk. Of now. yeah. As of now, I don't want to say the S word because it's it's bold. Yeah, this um, is this is a this is a fucking kids show. Fucking kids. Oh. oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, remember Christopher Walken? Like he wasn't in like quite a bit. He was in that Robert De Niro. Thing. Like half the cast of the Deer Hunter were in that weird family movie for some reason. Oh yeah, no. Um, now he's going to be in Dune. Uh, that's oh. that's awesome. Yeah, no, I yeah, come to think of it, like, I didn't even realize, but I haven't actually seen him in like anything in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's it's cool that he is. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, that's fun. Um. Yeah, I love um. To see Jennifer Lawrence uh, work with um, you know kind of like a, one of those like road trip comedies like but one of those good ones you know what I mean not mm. like one of those like uh, girls trip ones or you know like road trip road trip or girls trip or anything like that I, I mean like uh, 
a genuinely like good funny one with yeah. uh, a talented director behind it. Um, I heard that. Um, I'm really bad with director names. It's um, God, who was that lad that directed Bridesmaids? He directed Ghostbusters as well, I think. Oh man, Feig. Paul Feig. Paul Feige. Paul Feige, yeah, Paul Paul Feige or Feig or whatever. Um, yeah, she she'd be cool with him, I think. I think that, yeah, they would work a lot in here and something like Bridesmaids. Yeah, I don't know, just something fun. I think she'd be yeah. cool in that. Um, anything else? Uh, nothing I can think of right now. No. Yeah, I think um, I think we should uh, wrap it up. I think we've yeah. uh, discussed. Uh, quite a lot of uh, wonderful people, wonderful talents, and uh, people have done a lot of uh, very, very good things, and uh, hopefully will uh, appear in uh, other stuff. And yeah. if there is any uh, actors or actresses or whoever, uh, or directors that uh, deserve to make some sort of a comeback, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. Set sound off in the comments below. Smash that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell for all new content every day. If you like what you see in here and you want to see more. <laughs> Statistics show that only 2% of you are subscribed. <laughs> subscribe, please. Did we talk about on this podcast? Actually, the Funky Podcast. Yeah, yeah. The Funky Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Funky Podcast. Yeah, yeah. You can get back on your shoes or your slippers or your socks and go out to the door. You can take off your headphones or change the channel, whatever you do. You can take a shit now, too. You can go on the loo. Go for your food. That's what you do, cause you listen to the funky podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very good success. <laughs> 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 <laughs>